Hi, I'm John R. I'm your instructor here on the Online Jewelry Academy. Now some of you are getting a little bit sophisticated with the projects that you're making and I know you want a little more information about soldering. Now in the jewelry business, glue is a four letter word. We usually say it's chemically bonded, but anyway, we normally solder things or fuse things together. Today I'm going to show you how to solder pieces together in such a way that the solder is not visible. That's called sweat soldering. It's not a very attractive name, but it sure is effective. Now in another video called Hammered Texture Earrings, I showed you how to make these earrings using copper washers from the hardware store. And you can see I applied three different textures to the, to the earrings. Now, I wanted to make something to go with these earrings. So I made a pendant. Now this pendant that you can see exhibits the same textures that are used on the same size washers on the earrings. And I think it would be great for either a man or a woman. Now sweat soldering has just a couple of rules that you need to follow. The first one is you need to work with clean materials because solder is like a little girl in a party dress. She won't go anywhere where there's dirt. The second thing is, solder's kind of naughty, and she'll go with the first piece of metal that gets hot for her, so you need to heat the whole piece up so that the solder flows exactly where you want it. All right, let me clean this up, and I'll show you how it's done. First thing that you're gonna need is your copper washers. And we use these in the earring project. You're going to need a bench block or some kind of smooth surface to strike on. And you're going to need a couple of hammers. In this case, we're going to use the cross peen hammer and the ball peen hammer. First thing we want to do is to put a little bit of texture onto these pieces. But remember, we're going to overlap. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to give myself some kind of a guideline to follow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the project as if it were already put together. So the smaller disc is going to go on top of the larger washer. And I know I said disc, but I meant washer. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just draw some lines on the outside of the smaller washer with a uh, permanent marker. Now, you'll notice that the width of the marker kind of puts those lines a little bit further away from the top washer. That's fine, as long as you know approximately where to stop hammering. Okay, so I'm going to take the smaller washer off, pick up the cross peen hammer with its flat edge, and I'm going to strike in one place like a machine and rotate the large disc to create the same radial effect that I have on my earrings. All right, here we go. Textured the larger washer. Now I'm going to put back the smaller one to see if I did it correctly and I left enough room for that to be soldered to a flat surface. And I did. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put a matching texture on the smaller washer. So I'll move the larger one away. I'm going to pick up the ball peen hammer and I'm going to use the ball end of it. Now when I hit this, I'm not hitting very hard. If you damage the edge, you can always go back with a file or an emery board and correct it. And the other thing is, is that I forgot to mention earlier that these have been pre-annealed or softened with heat in order to receive the texture better. So be sure to anneal your pieces before you start. Okay, let's take a little preview because I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. It's going to be kind of pretty. And I think it's acceptable for either a man or a woman. Remember, the best jewelry for a guy is something that the girlfriend will want to steal. <laughs> okay, so let's let me show you now how we're going to put these together. Let me clear off my tabletop. Okay, so what I'm going to need is my 
flame retardant, heat resistant ceramic shelf that has little feet on it to allow for air circulation. And I'm going to use a hardened charcoal block. Now I'm going to set this next to my ventilation system, which will evacuate heat and fumes, so we're not breathing any of that in. I'm also going to need, let's see here, I'm going to need some solder. I'm going to need a pair of tweezers to pick up that solder. I need a paintbrush to apply the flux with, and here's my flux. And I need my washers again. Okay, so here's the deal. I want the top washer to be soldered so that it hangs in the center, sort of, of the larger washer like that. So I probably only need one side of it to be cemented or soldered to the larger washer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over so that the texture side is down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some flux. Remember, I only need one half of it done, so I'm going to apply flux to one side just like that. Now, solder only goes where flux is applied. It doesn't like dirt, so it wants to stay in that clean zone that the flux creates. All right, so I've got my solder, or, or my, sorry, I've got my flux applied. Now I'm going to apply some pallions of solder. Remember, the correct size for a pallion of solder is about one millimeter square. Now, I made these a little bit bigger so that they would show up on camera. Now, what you want to do is you want to apply enough pallions in order to cover the, uh, or flood the surface that you're trying to solder. All right, so I've got five pieces of solder that are applied on top of my flux, and I just want to melt them. Okay, so I've got my little handy butane torch. I'm going to turn it on light it, and I'm just going to heat the material until the solder flows. Now, I could use a solder fix, so I'm bringing that up, and I'm going to reposition some of the solder back on that surface. Okay, so we're going with that blue flame close to the copper. Now, we just want that solder to melt. That's all we want it to do, just melt and flow in that area. And if I want to, I can use the pick to kind of slide it around a little bit. Okay. After that's done, no need to even wait for it to cool. Take your flux and just repaint the flux directly on top of the melted solder. Just like that. The heat from the piece will help to dry out the flux and you're almost immediately ready to go to the next step. Okay, so let me grab my tweezers again, because this is hot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the large washer right there, and then I'm going to pick up the smaller washer, and I want to put that area that has been coated with melted solder on top of the large washer. Okay, this doesn't look very special right now, but let me just tell you one thing that you want to bear in mind, and that is, you noticed that I put the flux over the solder and not on the large copper washer. The reason why is solder will only flow where there's flux, and I don't want to see any silver solder on the larger washer. The fact that I applied the flux on top of the hot surface of the melted solder in order to dry it out means that nothing got onto my big washer, so nothing's going to spread out. Now, I've got my solder pick in hand, I'll put it in my right hand because I'm right-handed. I'm going to turn on my torch, and then I'm going to heat the whole thing, and as it comes to temperature, I'm going to push down so that they make a nice connection. Okay, turning on the torch. There we go. Heating the whole thing. Now you notice the flame wants to clean off the oxidation, but then it goes ahead and reapplies it right all over again. So we're going to heat the large washer and the small one. Remember to heat the largest piece first most times. Okay, so they're getting nice and heat stained. And I'm looking for that 
dark red glow of annealing, that tells me that it's almost ready for the solder to flow. Okay, we're getting close. I see the temperature change happening, so I'm going to push down with my solder pick. And I'm looking at the color. See that nice red color? That tells me that soldering probably took place. All right, so let's put our torch away. Let me bring out some water. Now, it's important whenever you solder, one of the things that you want to be sure to do is, if you used a tool, quench it. You don't want to leave a hot tool around that you can burn yourself on. Now, what I want to do is just pick up my project and quench it in clear water to cool it down. Okay. It looks a little dirty, but it's well attached. And you'll notice that there's no silver solder anywhere on the large washer. Okay, I'm going to pickle this, and then I'll be back in just a minute to show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, I've cleaned up the piece that we just sweat soldered, and as you can see, I've got it displayed next to the earrings that were made in a previous video entitled Hammer Texture Earrings. And you can see the largest washer matches the texture of the largest washer on the earrings. So all that's left to do is to turn this simple piece into a wearable. That's pretty easy to do. What you need is a piece of leather thong. Now, I put the two ends of the thong together, and I pull until I create a loop at the other end. Then what I want to do is I want to take this piece, and I'm going to pass that loop through the smallest hole of the piece from the back. Okay? Then I'm going to take the ends of the thong, and I'm going to pass them through the loop, and just pull up tightly. Now, you can add knots here if you want to, but it's going to stay secure. Then, the rest of the assembly is just making a few knots. What you want to do is grab one end of the thong, wrap it around the other end, and make a simple slip knot. Just loop it through and give it a pull. Then, you take the other end, go around the other side of the thong, loop around, make a simple slip knot like you did on the other side, and then just pull the thong until you end up with something that looks like this. Now, what the great part of this is that it makes for an adjustable pendant. If you pull the knots together, you have something really long that will fit over your head, and then if you reach back and you pull the knots apart, I can raise the pendant up to any height that I want, which would make it visible through uh, the opening of a blouse or a, a jacket. I hope you have fun making this project. Check out our other videos and our products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.